Hello there YouTubers. Today I'm going to do a how-to video here. Um, it's turkey season down around where I live and uh, a few people have gotten them and I just wanted to do a quick video here to show how to prepare a fa fan mount. A lot of people don't uh, do them properly and uh, as you can see here that is a, a Mackenzie form that you put your beard and your tail fan in. Now most people when they do the tail fans and I'll explain better here they don't uh, cut the tails properly. They don't preserve them properly and it can lead to bugs and the feathers eventually falling out. So to prepare your tails also like this one here as you can see properly the tail fan itself it's a little hard for me to see with the camera the tail fan itself is completely flat right here. The only thickness you have is the actual feathers and as you can see, that's actually a very thin plaque. And a lot of the problems people have when they're cutting the tail fans off of their turkeys to do these plaques or anything, just simple projects, even if you just want to hang them in your house. One of the problems people have is they cut the tails off properly, or improperly. Alright, first things first here. This is a properly flesh tail that has been preserved. As you can see, that is only as thick as the feathers, and it's just got residue on it because I haven't cleaned it yet. And it's been sitting for a while, and it's a little dusty. That is perfectly flat. That can be put onto any mountable base that you would purchase from uh, manufacturers or pick up at the local Bass Pro shop or something. Now I'm going to show you how to do this and the improper way people cut their turkey tails off and dry them. This is the turkey tail right after it's been cut. See all the extra meat there? A lot of people don't remove the extra meat. Or they do, they only take off the back half and leave all this on the front. Now, depending on how you preserve it, that's going to eventually attract bugs, possibly get rancid if it's not dried properly, depending on how hot it is, and it's going to be too thick for half your plaque mounts. So what we're going to do, so I'm going to move this one out of the way, and I'm going to show you how to properly flesh out the turkey tail. The tools you're going to need are a pair of snips. I use a pair of uh, wire cutters. Let's see if I can get a better angle here for you. I use a pair of wire cutters, and then I have a scalpel from the taxidermy place with a number 22 blade, which is basically the surgical kind. But anything with a, uh, a sharp point to it will work pretty well here. You don't want a doll knife. That's one of the things you do not want. You're also going to need borax. This I picked up in the laundry section at Walmart for, I believe, like $3 for the whole box. And I've had it for years. I mean, I use it on all kinds of stuff. So, set that aside. We don't need that right now. <clears throat> now, first thing you want to do is, as you'll notice on the back of this tail, there is no extra feathers. As to the back of this tail, there's all these extras. So we're going to want to remove those. So flip it over to the back. This tail has thawed all day long, so it should be good to go. I'm going to take all these feathers and fold them forward, exposing the bottoms of, there's some stuck, or the quills of the main fan. I'm just going to take a knife and cut. You don't ever want to cut straight down because you might cut through the quills. So you want to cut with the quills. I'm just going to come right down in here, try and get a better view, cutting with the quills, you're going to cut down into this yellowy fat, fat and grease to it, so we're going to flip it over, cut along this way. Now you'll probably cut through the quills of these since they're bent backwards, that's fine, you're not saving them. Just take your time. You don't want to cut the membrane, the fat, or any of the material that runs alongside these quills. 
Now, when you get to here, there is a small bone in the center, which is what we're going to need our pliers for here in a minute. Come over to this side. can cut straight down through. Remove all that meat. There's what your back looks like. You can wear gloves if you want. This is a little bit of fat. There is a little bit of oily grease in there. I don't worry with gloves unless it's something that could possibly be carrying like rabies because they just get in my way. Now as I mentioned there's that hard bone right here. Now it's on the front we're gonna actually cut through that. Now that we've removed those back feathers you want to flip it around to the front As you can see, if we fan it out right now, we have a beautiful tail fan. This is a nice gobbler. This is actually the brother of the one I just showed you that's already been done. <clears throat> they were taken on, the, on a pipeline at the same time by me and my friend. Last year they came in, they were both a year, about probably two year old birds. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to peel these feathers forward and try and locate, there is a small almost like a little wart inside here somewhere and I'm going to really work to see if I can locate it. It should be past all these extra feathers. It might be a little difficult to see because this is frozen. Here it is. <clears throat> As you can see you have your primary feathers here and you have your secondary and then you have these that are kind of shiny, the reflectiveness on them. <clears throat> you want to pull the reflective ones down. Now right here, you'll see as I pull it down, is this small little bump. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that because this is important. It's got a little feather on top of it even. It'll be kind of easy to see. Now, that there is the grease gland. You do not want to cut into that. When you cut into it, it'll leave grease out as my finger, you can see maybe a little bit of the shininess there. My finger's already covered in grease just from touching it. You want to take your knife on the back side of this, not the front, the back side, and cut down with the quills just like we did before. <clears throat> now, again. Right there is the little grease gland. I'm going to be on the back side of it cutting down with the quills. You can throw that in the trash, we no longer need that. You want to remove the grease gland. Just cut right underneath it. And you'll see how yellow and greasy it can be. <laughs> if you cut into it, it'll, it's not a big deal, but... As you can see right there is the inside of the glands. They're actually frozen. Right there's the grease, or the oil, or whatever it is. They're actually frozen because this was thawing out today. Now, right there's that bone I was talking about. I hit it, it's hard, I can't cut through it with my knife. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it all the way around. Actually cut above it and just remove these feathers all together. And the grease so that I'm not dealing with that. much easier to see. As you can see, right here is the little bone and it comes up right into here. And we are just going to go ahead and cut around it, loosen it up a little bit, and then we are going to break it out with our pliers. and you want to just be careful you don't cut through any of the quills. Now, what we did is we came in and we made a cut here and here. As you can see, it separates right down to the bone. I come in with a pair of pliers. We've got to remove a little bit more meat to get down to the actual bone. We just 
want to cut right through that bone. Just like that. There we go. Fairly simple. Now you'll notice that it's it's really flexible. That bone's what holds it there so that they can actually operate their tail. So I guess it's part of their tailbone, I guess you could call it. Now as you see, we still have all this extra meat and some fat, and there's even a piece of bone yet. What we're going to do is we're going to trim all this meat off. Now, these quills come down, as you can see on the finished product, about to where my tip of my finger is. And then the main feather quills come down farther. So when you're cutting in, you want to make sure you find the tips of these and cut down and remove the extra fat. And I'll explain that here in a second. I apologize for all the bad camera angles. My battery isn't holding a charge at all. And I have to actually keep it plugged in. So it's a little difficult now. As I was saying before, I'm actually going to be operating through the camera so you're seeing exactly what I am. Here's our secondary quills. They come down. You just run your knife right along them basically fleshing any extra meat. See there, I caught it. You'll feel if you catch it. It's not something that you won't know what it is. You'll feel it right away. Now there is another bone right here. We're going to have to work around. Be extremely careful when cutting. You do not want to cut your hand. I'll have to uh, call my friend and let him know I found one of his pellets in the tail of this turkey. He was bragging about how perfect of a shot it was, and mine wasn't. Like I said, these two were actually uh, brother turkeys that we were hunting, and we set up on this property on a pipeline in an opening, it was the only place that we had to actually see for the turkeys. And uh, we put them in the bed the night before and they all started gobbling first thing in the morning and they all went every direction. And after a few minutes of calling, these two started gobbling and actually came in. By themselves, walked out on the pipeline and came straight down towards our decoys. As you can see, I'm getting through the meat down into like the yellowy stuff here. That's the bottom parts. That's the top of the uh, main quills. They get that yellowy fat around the quills. That's how you know you're through the meat. So we're going to remove this. Maybe. Make sure you have a place that you can do this, that you're not going to get in trouble with anybody if you make a mess. So the turkeys came down the pipeline, continue with our story. They came out strutting, put on a perfect show. Seen it a hundred times, thought for sure, well not a hundred times, but seen it lots of times, thought for sure they were going to come out, look at the decoys and just walk away and not pay any mind to us. Well, they came out, put on a little bit of show, came strutting down the pipeline, gobbling and strutting the whole way down, probably 50, 60 yards took the safety off, was getting ready, they kept coming, they kept coming. I don't know why, for some reason I thought they were a lot farther than they were, but my friend said he was just waiting for me to shoot, because I had my gun on him first. He was waiting for me to shoot. They were about 20, I'd say 20 yards from us. I thought they were a lot farther than that. The one I had my gun on in the front comes out of the full strut, looks at the decoy, I thought he was going to bolt. When he came out of the strut, I never moved my sights off of his head. And when I pulled the trigger, I hit him low and shot part of his beard off. The other one turned and started to run, and my friend shot it running away. Like we said, they were both had about inch spurs and I think about nine inch beards. So we're assuming that they were both brothers, probably were Jake's last year. <laughs> and that was my friend's joke all last year about how I shot the beard off my turkey and the year before I had shot one and we left the beard in the cabin and the mice actually got to it and actually ate the beard so I didn't even get that beard last year so there's this bone here again 
as you can see right there. So we're going to remove this sum too. Yeah. Oops. Take that off. Flip it back over. I'm actually going to flip it over and work on the back. Again, here's the fat. You just want to work your way right down the quill, not cutting through the quills. And you don't want to cut this way, because if you do, you'll possibly sever one of the quills off of the actual uh, fan itself. See, I'm just basically fleshing that fat right off of there. Again, this is just for your own personal use. If you do not want to have to pay somebody to do one of them self mounts, or if you want to try it yourself, if you were just interested, I know a few people that we hunt with actually just take their turkey tails and cut them off, like I just showed you how it was before the improper way, and flush a little bit of it off, and then salt it, and then just screw it into the wall of their garage. And that's not really what you want to do because the mice will get that. And that's another thing when you're drying this, just like I said about my beard, you do not want to leave them somewhere that the mice are going to get them. So we're going to zoom out a little bit if I can. And we'll just work farther away. There we go. We're going to come back straight down in to where that bone is. And if any, remove it. There we go. And the bone is out. As you can see, we're almost there. You will also need a few pins. If you don't have uh, like sewing pins with the, the bulbs on the end of them for when you're pinning things together, uh, I suggest running to somewhere like a, the fabric stores, uh, Michaels, AC or something. Uh, Walmart carries the big T pins, they work perfect. But you're gonna need pins and something to pin it to. If you have uh, cardboard from like a TV box or something, a couple pieces of cardboard put, put together work. A couple pieces of cardboard put together will work. Just something you can fan this out and then you're going to pin it the direction or how you want it to dry. Because otherwise it'll just dry. And crinkle up on you and look horrible. And you're taking this much time to do something, you don't want it to look ugly. I'd say this is probably like a, a novice skill. This is not very difficult. I know if you've ever like read any of the books or stuff, um, Cabela's, they always sell the squirrel mounting kits. If you're going to get a squirrel mounted, either go somewhere or actually do some research. Do not buy them kits because they're for one size squirrel only and they are not very helpful for instruction wise. I found that out when I first started doing taxidermy. And I actually like doing squirrels. They're easy, they're fun. And I kind of like how they you can make them whatever you want. I had a customer that wanted two of his uh, fox squirrels done. And I asked him how he wanted them done. He said he didn't care. So I actually cut him. Or maybe he brought me, brought me a piece of pine. And I actually mounted the squirrels laying, one was laying on the log sleeping or a branch, and the branch mounted right into his room. And then the other one was scratching his ear on the other side, and I think they turned out awesome. I was kind of sad to see him go, because I had him in my kitchen drying, and I got to look at him every day, and I really, really, really liked him. But this is something that's actually very easy. You don't need to sit here and watch the video while you're doing it. If you watch the video once or twice, you'll have it figured out. It's very, very simple. Now you want to just make sure you got it about where you want. If you don't like how much that bone sticks up, you can take it out more. It really doesn't matter once it's that narrow. Because most of your mounts are only going to have enough room. Or they'll even come with a little plastic plate that you attach this to before you put it on like your mount. Like the uh, turkey with the tail fan I showed you in the living room. 
that's just the tail fan. I drilled out the chest piece, you put your beard in, and then you attach this piece, plastic piece to the tail fan, and then you attach the tail fan to the actual turkey mount itself. All right. Now we're done with the fleshing. Now comes the pinning and the final step. Now, like I said, you need some cardboard and I'm gonna have to back the camera up. Also, if you tie your own flies for any reason, save some of your turkey feathers. I don't know what all they'd be great for, but I'm gonna try and tie a few for catching sunfish. <laughs> yeah. I have a piece of styrofoam. I got this from uh, one of my job sites. They used them, a bunch of pieces, really big pieces, and then threw them out. So I took a bunch of them. Now, as you can see here, there is a couple damaged feathers where it looks like his shot might have hit. See right here the uh, the white and the actual tail fan? That's also on my tail fan that I just showed you earlier, the one that I used for demonstration here. What we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. And like I said, the borax is not expensive. Do not go light on it. Just pile it in there. It'll all shake out in the wash. You want to pile it in, rub it in good, get it down into the fat. I like to leave the pile of the stuff that falls right here, and that's where I'll put my fan when I pin it. That way there's a whole pile underneath it too. Just really get it in there, rub it around. What this does is this will help preserve, preserve it. It'll dry out any of the little bit of meat that's left. It'll dry out any of the fat help soak up the grease and since it's borax it'll actually be a good bug repellent. This is used a lot in duck mounts and you can even it'll even help you pull some of the fat right off of there. It's used in some duck mounts and stuff like that. So you want to get it in nice and good. Just rub it in there really good. You don't have to be like I said don't be cheap with it. It's not expensive. Flip it over. Now these are the T pins I was talking about from Walmart. They're about two inches long. I use them in all kinds of stuff for taxidermy. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your outside fan feathers. Make sure you got your room. I always start with one side first. Bring it down to where you want it. Take a pin right inside. Right here is my pin. You want to be maybe an inch or two up, pin it right inside the feather. If it's not going to stay, you can actually come down into the heavier, fluffy area here that won't be exposed on any mount and put it right through the actual feather itself. Oops, zoom out. We're going to take this end now, take this outside quill, take it to where we want it, where I think it needs to be for this tail fan to dry properly. Put it down. And we're going to put it through the quill. And then we're going to put a second one right here just outside the quill. Now, this is where you want to make sure all your feathers lay the way you want them to. If uh, this feather here is damaged, and I can lay it underneath another one, I want to do that. If it's just split like that, you can, of course, I'm having a horrible time seeing the actual picture of what I'm showing you guys here, so bear with me. See how this uh, feather here is actually split a little bit? He's not actually broke. You can just use your fingers, put him back together. Like I said, make sure your feathers lay the way you want. I'm going to pull out the center ones here. Make sure that they're all right where I want them. And all the back feathers and the actual fan lay the way I want them to in order. None of them are overlapping the wrong feather. Which you will notice because it will not look right if it is. Now, I also like to lay this down, push it down, come right in about the center here, go down through one of the secondary quills and push a T-pin down the whole way to hold that fan down. Come up here somewhere where you're not going to see it, same thing. Just push a T-pin down. Oops, that one went through. Push a pin down just to hold the feathers down because you want this to dry flat. Now, 
got our tail fan fanned out. You can even use smaller pins so that you're not leaving holes in your fan if you're concerned with that. Just pinning it down to make sure we get it the way we want it to be. This one, I'm going to put him in here. Pull that down. There we go. Now, four axle on the front. Again, do not be afraid to use it. Don't worry if you get some on the actual tail fan. It does not matter. It all shakes out. The only place it's going to stick is to the fat, and that's because it's going to actually dry into the fat. Work it in there really good. Any place that's wet or greasy or anything is going to soak it up. You want to really work it in there. Now I just pour a bunch on there then, just to overkill it. Again, I'm going to make sure I got the tail just the way I want it before I leave it to dry. And that's the tail fan. The end product will be, I'd say you wait about two weeks before you mess with it. It'll be dried, hard, just like that, flat. You just have to dust it off. Uh, Swiffer sweepers do wonders for dusting it. And then when you want to actually go mount this, uh, any plaque you buy from Bass Pro, Cabela's, if you go directly through a, a manufacturer for taxidermy purposes, this whole part here is usually what's covered. That'll be perfectly flat. It'll fit in a, just about any mount you want, even if you don't want that. You can take this, take a drill bit, drill a small hole right down through here, take it out to your garage and screw it onto one of your studs or take it to your hunting camp. And You can spray paint this, you can make something, you can take a piece of leather, a piece of cloth, anything you want across there. Take it up and hang it in your hunting cabin. Lots of people do that. Mine is going to probably end up out in the shed with mine from last year and this one is my friend's. It'll be get it'll be given back to him in about I'd say about two or three weeks is about how long it'll take to completely dry, pull the moisture out. If it's cold, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Do not leave it anywhere that's extremely hot and humid. Do not leave it anywhere that's gonna be exposed to flies, because the last thing you want is flies getting in there. This is a bug repellent, the borax, but you do not want the chance of flies getting in there and laying larvae, egg, or anything on it. And that's how you do the turkey tail.